The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or when you use our code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a mom of three kids, ages two, five, and seven, and I live in Southern California. And I'm Megan. I am the mom of five kids, ages six through 17, and I live in Michigan. This is the Mom Hour, part of the Life Listened Network. Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 39 of the Mom Hour. I am Megan Francis, here as always with my good friend Sarah Powers. Hey Sarah, how are you? I'm great, Megan. How are you? I am good. We're going to be what talking are... about picky eaters today. Oh, that's a good one. Um, it's funny, when people ask me if I have a picky eater, I just don't even say yes anymore because I've just resigned myself to like this being my reality. It, it's almost like she doesn't even feel picky to me anymore. Right. So oh, interesting. Well, <laughs> so, and we'll get into this more, but I always thought of myself as somebody who wasn't super stressed out about picky eating. Like I had pickiness in my house, but right. I wasn't like trying to sneak in vegetables in the blender. And I feel like I'm kind of in a transition where I really do need some support in this area. So we'll talk about right. that. But um, obviously, if you have a picky eater, not only are you not alone, you are just one of all of us. All of us. I think. Oh, we said that at the same time. In stereo. All right. Yeah. Well, should we um, should we first do our now regular, yes, not even offici- a little bit irregular segment? Our officially regular segment is called What's Happening in Your House This Week? And it's just where we kind of riff on something that we've been doing or watching or a product or an experience we had and kind of give you a peek into our lives. So I was just thinking how much fun I've been having watching TV in the last week, which is maybe silly. But um, I feel like you and I have talked about TV on and off on different episodes. But Brian and I, that's like our evening bonding. That's what we do together. We usually almost always watch shows together. Mm -hmm. And we usually have a good drama going, like something that we're working our way through. You know, we did Breaking Bad. We've done Mad Men. We've done um, Boardwalk Empire. You know, like some heavier dramas. Right. Um, I'm waiting for House of Cards to come back eagerly because we're... When is that coming back? Mar- Oop, soon. Like Good. beginning of March. And the whole thing will drop. Like the whole... Good. Um, well, we'll watch it all in a weekend probably. Right. That's how we and we do Downton. Brian and I do Downton mm-hmm. Abbey together, which I know for some that's like a girly show, but he likes it with me. And so we love that together. But we've been kind of on a break of our dramas. Like we've been in between dramas other than Downton. So we've been going back and watching some like sitcom comedies, some of which we're even rewatching. So I thought I'd mention which ones because I always love hearing what other people are watching. So we've gone back and rewatched Veep, which is so funny and yes. so good. Um, we actually started at the beginning. You, re- you rewatched it. I need to do that. It's we're so done with it worth now. rewatching. But yeah. I feel like season one, like so many shows, was finding its place. So we watched a few in season one, and I was like, let's just skip forward to season yeah. two or three. Because it got so, Agreed. it was funny, but it got so much funnier. So I like to um, piggyback Veep and House of Cards because I will lit- like literally start losing track of which plot line belongs awesome. to which set of characters. And they're not that different. I mean, no, the, you know, the aides are all very yeah. kind of the same, except one set's really funny and the other one's not. But otherwise, like the politics is all the same. The, the leaders yeah, are all kind a, of the same. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. A, like a yin yang. Well, it you is. Could some, you could throw some West Wing in there and then just have a really oh, full I've thing, never but... actually watched West Wing. But John and I would often watch like a House of Cards or two. And then we, it was so heavy. Yes. And I think Veep is only like 22 minutes long or something. It, well, yeah, it's definitely a half hour of some. It's a half hour without. Head. And if no, you don't no have commercial. commercials, then. Yeah. Yeah, it's really short. So you can just kind of slide that in if you're feeling yeah. a little down about, you know, Frank yes. and, and his wife and stuff. So yeah, it's, um, yeah. So anyway, back to you. You well, were talking and I. Oh, well, yeah. No, no, we lo- love the, it is super funny. And then um, 30 Rock, which is one of my yeah. probably favorite comedies of all time. And I haven't, we watched 30 Rock kind of when it was on for the most part. Mm-hmm. So it's been a few years since it's been complete. And I decided that if I just had a compilation of every 
Liz Lemon, Jack Donaghy, uh, yes. Tina Fey, and Alec Baldwin scene just mashed up. I would watch mm-hmm. it for an uninterrupted however long that took. Forever, like, and however I like the rest long. of the show, and I like the rest of the characters. But like, I, if you were strapped into a chair and forced to watch television for the rest of your life, yeah. that's what you would choose. It, it, it really, it's right up there. It's right <laughs> up there. So that's another funny one we've been rewatching. Um, and then, oh, one more shout out for comedy lovers. If you were a fan of The Daily Show and you've been hesitant to jump on board the Trevor Noah bandwagon. I just want to say that I am a little bit in love with him. Brian knows this. It takes a long time. If you were a Jon Stewart devoted fan, it's just weird at first, you know, right. like any kind of transition like that. You're like, why is someone else in his chair and reading the, the right. writing is the same. So sometimes it's like someone else is reading these same jokes. But, but um, if you haven't given it a chance because it just feels too weird, give it a chance. And um, I just think Trevor Noah is super, super funny and really smart and um the show's doing a really good job with the new transition. So that's for Daily Show people. If you just fell off the wagon, jump back on. I've seen clips of his on Facebook and I like him a lot. I haven't, I haven't sat and watched the show, but yeah, I'm a little bit obsessed with him. Like I listened to this whole detailed interview about his life growing up in South Africa and he's bringing really intelligent, um, to me, intelligent, um, conversations about race to the show. And, and he's just really funny. I mean, he's a stand-up comedian and, um, so he is my current, um, like, sarcastic humor crush right now. Brian's <laughs> fully aware. So that's what we've been watching. What have you guys been watching lately? Well, like you, we are also, the way we, you know, bond is TV at night, usually tired in bed. Like, I'm, and I'm always the one who has to hold the device. Why is that? <laughs> who holds the device? Do you watch TV in bed? Uh, no. Well, sometimes we come, we watch our main TV downstairs. And then yeah. we do have a TV in the bedroom, but if we come up and put something on, it will be like, I'm guaranteed to fall asleep. So it might uh-huh. be like a daily show or yeah. like something where I don't really care if I fall asleep in the last half. But our if shows that, like, that, that continue plot wise, we yeah. watch downstairs. So if I'm, if I'm really settling in for like an evening of TV, we will sit on the sofa and watch it. But if we're just going to like knock out one episode of something before we both zonk out, it's usually in bed. And depending on how tired we are, sometimes we just... It's so funny because the living room is like 30 feet maybe from our bedroom, maybe. And there's times where I'm sitting here in my pajamas like, I just can't, I just can't make it that far and back. Like, can we just get in the bed now? So I, anyway. Yeah, no, I'm the same way. Yeah. Like towards the end, I'm like, I will watch that, but let's watch it from bed. Like, cause then my <laughs> exactly. teeth are brushed and I can fall asleep. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, that's an aside, but we are watching, we are rewatching X-Files. So, you know, now they just oh, really gosh. released a new yes. season, um, only six episodes. We're already four in. Um, I'm loving it so far, but we decided, you know, we were really, really fanatically into the X-Files for a long time. And we, um, there's a kind of, I remember the first three or two or three seasons really, really well because we rewatched a lot of those. Okay. And that was when we were even sometimes watching them a couple, we had like a the VHS box set and we would sometimes go back mm-hmm. and watch them again and again. And then, you know, like episodes like your seasons like five six seven eight it all starts to kind of get a little blurry to me I knew that was still like a lot Mm -hmm. of really important plot points were happening and their relationship was developing and all that but I couldn't ever really remember what happened when so we decided to skip the first like four seasons yeah and just go through and pick out you know from like season five on what looked to be um definitely the season premieres and the season finales but what just looked to be really important episodes I was guessing most of the time and so we're now kind of like partway into season seven. And man, it's a good show. Every time we watch it, we just keep, we're so ex- like happy about it. We just keep looking at each other and going, this is such a good show. I know. And we're it's like, also I, we a little nostalgic. X- we don't watch X-Files, but I'm totally know exactly what you mean. Like we, yeah. we geek out over TV and too. And for us, there's a little nostalgia in there because we watched that when we were just early married and that was right. something for a long time. So um, that and then when we need a break from Aliens and Monsters, we watch um, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia which oh i have never seen that oh my gosh it is so wrong and so funny i know it's again like like 22 minutes long and they're in the the 11th season i think is out now who's in it and what network or what channel is it on i want to say it's on fx but you can get most of them on amazon or on netflix and then the most recent one is the only one you really can't i actually purchased the whole season 10 on christmas day because john has this thing about not ever purchasing tv like he'll just wait for the next season to come out but it was Christmas Day, and I was like, darn it, you know, as a gift to us, I'm going to spend $20 and just buy the whole season. So I bought the whole season, and then he and I, like, laid around in bed the next couple of days. And, um, excuse me. <coughs> oh, my Bless goodness. You. Thank you. I think I'll leave that in. On air sneeze. Yes, on air sneeze. That's, that might be my first. Wow, I couldn't <laughs> hold that one back. Um, so anyway, so we 
ended up watching all of that. So now we're like, now we have to wait for the next one to come oh, out. But yeah. you should give it a chance. It's so funny. And who's in it? I mean, Charlie. They're not really like well-known actors, I don't Big think. Names. Charlie Day. Oh, He's been okay. in some movies. He was in the Horrible Bosses movie. Brian's so. probably heard of it because he he reads more. He reads like TV. Oh, and Danny. And... Sorry, Danny DeVito's in it. But like otherwise, okay. you probably wouldn't recognize the actors. I feel like okay. they've really just done this show. Okay. But they're great and they're very, very funny and the plot lines are hilarious and stupid and they're terrible people, but you just well, laugh TV at them is terrible so people. so dang good right now like yeah. that there's so much to watch and I almost had guilt about some of these rewatching, but I've let go of the guilt because the rewatching is just as satisfying. Hey, and you get to, you know, sometimes you, you get to decide. Yeah. We live in a, a democracy. <laughs> yes. And it extends to our it. television. I love it. We are welcoming our longtime sponsor, Prep Dish, back to the show today. And listeners, if you're looking to boost your protein intake, Prep Dish is making it so easy right now. When you sign up in January, you'll get access to a month's worth of the new Prep Dish Protein Boost meal plans. I love this, Sarah. Protein is so important for our health. It helps support mental clarity, sleep, energy, hormone balance, and more. And as busy moms, we're often not getting enough protein, especially at breakfast. With these meal plans from Prep Dish, you'll learn how to quickly prep four protein-rich dinners and one breakfast. Right. And like all Prep Dish meal plans, they make it so simple to shop once, prep for the week ahead of time, and save time on busy weeknights by having your meals ready to heat and serve. And Megan, these meals sound so delicious and perfect for January. Listen to this. Slow cooker carnitas bowls, stuffed pepper soup, and then there's a Swiss chard mushroom and goat cheese frittata for breakfast. Okay, I am adding that stuffed pepper soup to my rotation ASAP. This is a limited time offer, so make sure to sign up before the end of January to get your free bonus meal plans. To learn more and sign up now, visit prepdish.com slash themomhour. Again, that's prepdish.com slash themomhour for a month's worth of the new Prep Dish Protein Boost meal plans. Check it out. Sarah, you know when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies. But having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean, bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients, and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start ritual or add essential for women 18 plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. So should we get to the actual topic? Let's get to our actual topic now that we've talked <laughs> right. about what we're watching. Um, oh my gosh. I hope you're going to help me with this one, Megan. Okay, Feeding picky eaters. I'll try. You start yeah. us off. Well, what do you want me to say? Put some, you, you know, solve all my problems. Okay. Okay. Why um, don't you describe your problem first yes. and then I'll be your okay, therapist. This will be our, our podcast therapy session. No. Um, so I obviously know that picky eating is really normal and I always a little bit, I have to say a little bit poo pooed, uh, solutions that involved hiding vegetables. I know people are on either side of this debate. I didn't really have a strong opinion about it. I just, it wasn't my style to spend a lot right. of time trying to sneak Um, vegetables into my kids as long as they were open to eating a vegetable at some Mm -hmm. point throughout the week Um, you know and I definitely subscribe to the belief that like the one meal the one plateful doesn't need to be balanced it's over the course of a day and a week and so I I identified as a pretty laid-back person when it came to nutrition and my kids like we don't eat a lot of processed food we don't eat fast food really hardly ever so I felt like as long as I was putting real food in front of them and they were eating some of it, it just wasn't that big a deal. But I will say, like, we're, we're in a new level of pickiness with Reed, who's five and a half. Okay. Um, and yeah, he's like, you're a worrier and you're yeah, anxious he's kid. And so he's, he's an intense it. personality. Yeah. So yes. some of that goes along with, like, 
you know, he's more rigid in his, like the way he does things and what he likes and doesn't like. And actually he's growing out of that already, I can see. So that's great. He's doing great. He's a well-adjusted, intense, smart little kid. But um, it is, he is getting more picky and not less, which is a little bit disconcerting and frustrating. Like for a while, and it's mostly um, vegetables and even some fruit. It's mostly produce that's my main concern. Um, right. he, I know a lot of kids like get are weird about meat or protein, and that's the concern. But he's, um, he doesn't like all meat, but I know that he likes some meat, and I know that eventually he'll eat. Eventually we'll serve a meat that he'll like, and he'll get the protein. Um, but it's mostly vegetables. And I know that's like so cliche. But like for a while, carrots and hummus, like raw carrots and hummus, was a go-to. I could put it in his lunch. I could have it as a side dish at dinner if he didn't want whatever else. And then he just said to me, he was like quivery lip one day. And he said, mommy, I don't like carrots and hummus anymore. And it was like, he was like, mad about it. It was so sad. And I was like, that's okay. You know, tastes change. Our tastes change as adults. You probably just got sick of it because that's all I served him as far as a vegetable. So, um, I guess, I'm like at the point where I am ready to start to get creative about, at least from a nutrition standpoint, making sure that needs are met. And then yeah. one final thing I'll say about him is that he's the tiniest of them. So while I know he's not going to waste away and I'm not like, oh, we got to fatten the kid up. He is my child who he doesn't have a fantastic appetite to begin with. So sometimes it's it's like a matter of calories too. Like right. yeah. that I'd like to just see the calories go in as well as you know, getting the nutrients. So I think it's probably pretty typical. He's five and a half. Um, yeah, I was just Googling some things before we started recording and, um, talk, they were talking about the difference between picky and finicky and when it becomes like a true anxiety issue where they're, they don't want to eat it if they're at a party or somewhere else and they won't eat. And you know, he's not, he's not there. Like he has a school party today and I know what they're serving, and he'll find something. So he's not worried about it. He's not stressed about it, except for the And little. he'll eat. He just doesn't necessarily want to eat what you want him to eat. Yeah, and it's not super balanced. He mostly right. would okay. like to eat bread, peanut butter, carbs, yeah. and then anything. We don't. Well, to be honest, know. sometimes I would like to just eat bread and peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, here's, I guess I have a few thoughts. Yeah. Um, one is, I, Clara did the, kind of the similar thing where she was getting better with her eating and then got worse again. Um, mm-hmm. I would say when she was like four, now she still wasn't like knocking me out of the park with her love for vegetables, but I could definitely slice up some apples or give her, you know, berries. Like there was a definitely like kind of, there was a few vegetables that I knew she would eat. And, oh, mm-hmm. uh, broccoli was one, you know, she just kind of stopped caring. Like she stopped avoiding it. She started to like it. Mm-hmm. And then she kind of, went the other direction again. And I would say she's now just starting to come back out of it. And she's almost seven. Mm -hmm. So I have this memory, two memories actually of being almost exactly her, maybe, maybe a little young, maybe between Reed and Clara's age. So maybe Mm -hmm. more like six, you know, solidly Mm -hmm. like five going on six or six in a little bit and being freaked out because I had always like loved cheese and suddenly I only like wanted Velveeta or something. I remember this and I remember being worried about it. Like, Aww. but I used to love cheese so much. Why don't I, you know, it used to be so pleasurable to eat cheese. And yeah. now, now I don't like cheese. I also remember feeling that way. This is not the same, but I also remember feeling that way about mayonnaise versus Miracle Whip. Like I remember having like a little six year old um, identity crisis because I had always loved mayonnaise <laughs> and now suddenly I loved Miracle Whip and so much now that it sticks in my head. Like, why would I remember that? So I think that changing is really normal. And yeah. maybe the kid has no idea where it's coming from either. And who knows what's behind right. it? I mean, right. um, that's just, you know, an anecdotal thing. But so when you said, you know, about the hiding the vegetables, I, I've never had a super strong opinion. I guess I would say I've always, philis- I've always been philosophically opposed to starting there. Like, right. I don't want that to be the premise by which I come to feeding my family. Like, right. nobody knows what I'm giving them. Ha, 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 ha. But at the same time, if I know I can make a spaghetti sauce and if I throw it in the blender, I can also throw a whole bunch of vegetables I'll never right. know are there, right. then I don't mind. I have no problem doing that. Or like things like stews or soup where everything kind of falls apart and just tastes right. like stew or soup. Right. Um, you know, that also, like, it's especially if the soup is kind of thick and brothy and you can't really see the vegetables. Right. I don't have a problem with that. I just never wanted to like jump through hoops and go through all this theatric right. stuff 
like smoke and mirrors to purposefully hide the fact that they're eating good food right from the beginning now or, if you're or you know years it, in or to not serve the good food out in plain sight because right. you're hiding it i think that's another way that you could go amiss is not right. thinking to put out a plate of roasted vegetables because you right. know they're hidden in the sauce but then but then there's no opportunity to to try them and to real try life. them out so you can do so both what, like i do both yeah sticky. yeah yeah, I'll do both. Like if I serve spaghetti, you know, then I know the sauce is going to have good stuff in it that I've not even necessarily all that purposefully hidden. It's just kind of wound up hidden. Right. <laughs> but I'm also going to cook up some broccoli and have it on the side. And and I'm still going to put some of that broccoli on Clara's plate. You know, I don't know how much of it she's going to eat, but it's going to be there. But there are times like, you know, that she'll eat like one tiny little broccoli tree and be and that is like torture for her. And then there's other times that she just eats it and it's not a big deal. So I have far from solving this issue Mm -hmm. (laughs) at all. Um, I don't know. I also think that just as you look at nutrition as being over the course of a day or, you know, a whole day or a whole week, not just one meal. I also think maybe you can look at it even in larger chunks of time than that. Um, I mean, there are definitely times I'll go a week and realize at the end of the week, like I've hardly had any vegetables and I kind right. of feel like for oh, myself, yeah, totally. you know, as long as the husbands means... are out of town, yes, like, I, yeah. I could get to the end of the week and realize I've only had bread and cheese. Yeah. And yeah. I also, you know, I've also kind of, I've also sort of just resigned myself to the fact that there are certain things that like are going to be embraced and certain things that aren't. And if I really look at what's going to be embraced, I can kind of cobble together. Like Clara really likes strawberries and raspberries, but not blueberries. I don't know why. Um, who knows? But you can get, I mean, it's not like this time of year in Michigan, it's ter- like raspberries are going to be in a tiny little container and they're going to be expensive. But maybe I'll have one of those in the fridge because I know she can snack on that and I'll yeah. feel good about it. Um, even though like then she won't maybe necessarily eat the vegetables I have at dinner. Right. So that's, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Is, no, is any of this helpful? <laughs> it, it is helpful. And I think one thing that I have realized, I mean, I know from research and reading that the more pressure or the bigger right. deal we make this, the really the further downhill you go fast. And I know that, but it's that I need reminding of that constantly. And I think, um, my husband and I need to be reminded of that because as soon as we've identified, like, you know, he needs to eat better or we're concerned about this, then it's like, here, Reed, why don't you try this or here? And then there's two of us like, and even though we're pretty, I mean, we're trying to be pretty subtle about it. Not like, we're not like you will sit here until this plate is clean. We don't do that. But still, even mentioning it or even making any suggestion that there's sort of like parental approval tied to right. what you do with this food, I think is not great. And I do it. I'm saying it. I, ideally, there's no kind of approval or attachment to it's just here's our dinner, right. you know, take it, leave it. You know, we like to try, we encourage, but it's not a big high pressure situation. But that's a lot easier said than done, especially if you're concerned about your child's nutrition or their, you know, weight or whatever. So, and I mean, I guess that's why people sometimes turn to those shakes and stuff. And that's another thing I've never done. I guess I would, if my kid was underweight, you know, because I don't want them to then fill up on something that tastes chocolatey and delicious and not want, I feel like, I don't know. And I'm not a nutritionist. So everyone should be taking everything I say with a huge grain of salt right now. But I kind of feel like, you know, kids are, possibly more biologically hardwired hardwired to be picky than we acknowledge and Mm -hmm. maybe them going through phases it's such a universal and normal thing for them to go Mm -hmm. through stages where they even if they're not rejecting the same kinds of foods americans kids eat i think american kids get a big a really bad rap for being like picky and Mm -hmm. only eating standard american diet but I swear that I've read that there are studies where if you go into any culture there are kids have preferences kids always have preferences it just is going to look different depending on the foods available to them. Right. So maybe more of that is biological and evolutionary and, and okay. than we allow for, and maybe what they're learning right now, maybe it's more important that they learn how to be part of a family and eat a meal than it is that we stuff the right calories down their throats or the right nutrients down their throats. Well, Um, I do. I think there's for sure research showing that the, you know, the values around eating and family dinners and food are, have a much more lasting power than say like the nutritional balance of a given plate. Does that make sense? Like the messages we're sending 
in the way that we have family dinners and the food that we serve and put in front of them matters more than, you know, just eat your green beans or whatever. Yeah. I mean, maybe we just have more time to get it right than we think we do Mm -hmm. because we know so many people who grew up picky and didn't, you know, eat, you know, there's just the white phase. They went through only eight white things or only eight carbs or only ate this or that, whatever it was. Um, and I don't, I don't want to use the, the tired old adage, oh, they all turned out okay, because I know that's, you know, people also drove their kids around without car seats and right. seat belts right. for decades, and most of us turned out okay, but a lot didn't. But I think that car accidents are different in that it only affects who it affects, and food right. affects everybody, right? right? So when you look across a, a, a slice of humanity, adulthood, like us, and I know that I was an extremely picky eater and a healthy kid, and when I grew up... I became a really adventurous eater. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it took me until probably my early 20s. It didn't mm-hmm. really occur to me. I honestly didn't have the money to be a very adventurous eater in my teens, really. Right. You know, there wasn't really available to me, and I didn't have the money to go look for it on my own. But um, it's not – I don't think a picky 5-year-old is necessarily going to be a picky 15-year-old or a picky 25-year-old. Right. But I think you're right that the fam- the way you handle it in your family makes a big difference. And maybe that's the goal is that yeah. at some point they're going to embrace those things. I think so. I think so. Um, one thing I've noticed with Reed that is sort of surprising and a good reminder to never assume is he actually eats best at school. And I know a lot of kids eat oh. terrible at school. They're distracted mm-hmm. or they don't like, like a Laker sometimes doesn't like the way it smells if it's been in her lunchbox or whatever. Um, but he eats best at school. And I think because they have a very structured approach, I know they're supposed to eat quietly for the first, like, it's not very long, but the teacher asks them not because they sit at their little tables. And the teacher asks them not to talk and to start with their most nutritious stuff. And she sets a timer and it's only like maybe five minutes or something. And then they're allowed to kind of chit chat while they eat. Mm. But he eats his almost his whole lunch. And so I'll do things like I'll put I'm not going to put like something I know he'll hate in there. But I will like push him a little bit on whatever the fruit is and maybe put something I'm not sure if he's going to like or and he almost always eats his whole lunch. And I think part of it is um, he like he's in that structured environment and there's the time and place. And I'll just be really honest, eating in our house is pretty chaotic. Like we're all running around all the time. He's a slower eater. So he rarely is given that like time right. and space because there's so much going on and he wants to play with his sisters and he wants to, you know, if it's dinner time, Brian's just gotten home. He wants to talk to his dad. And so something about that school lunch, which is I think opposite. A lot of kids that at least that I hear about don't eat well at school. So I try to load up his lunch with, the things he likes, but just some solid nutrients too, because I'm always pleasantly surprised at how well he eats. eats. So maybe the lesson there is to, you know, look for the times when your kid your picky eaters do seem more open to trying things or just more, more relaxed in their eating where it's not a battle. And if it's Uh breakfast, if they're in a good mood in the morning, you know, think about ways to make breakfast kind of like the higher nutrients meal and forget about right I don't you know so it's maybe there's a lesson in there somewhere well and and little kids don't eat that much to begin with and if we're talking about you know people listening to this have everything from babies on up so Mm -hmm. if you're talking about a two-year-old they're they're tiny their stomachs are tiny and I think sometimes you can have a bigger impact with less than you think Mm -hmm. you know and that's one thing too is like make the most of the time that they're eating or pick the time that works the best for them and then really you know make the most of that time right but also make the most like I mean, this is going to sound really lame, but if when Claire, all she would eat was peanut butter and jelly for a while, well, I made sure I had like really good full fruit, yeah, like either freshly made jam or something that I knew had no preservatives and like was yep. good stuff, you know, yep. or um, sauces. If your kid loves to dip in mm-hmm. ketchup, maybe they'd also like to dip in a marinara sauce that you make real quick. Yep. So I think sometimes you can take that opportunity or like maybe if they like ranch, maybe you mm-hmm. can make a cucumber sauce. I mean, those are all mm-hmm. things. I mean, it's sauce that it doesn't really sound like it counts. But I think when you first of all, when you see how much kids dip, <laughs> right, it adds up. But I think that like every little bit can put you in that direction. Also, it's just exposing them to more flavors. So, yeah. yeah. And I like the idea of making breakfast if breakfast is a relaxed or 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 if it's a time of day, they just like the food better. Yeah. I've been able to get my kids to eat stuff like whipped up into a scramble that they wouldn't eat. Right. If they really had to pay attention to it or if, right. you know, the texture was like, you know, like a spinach scramble. Right. Yeah. Some kids are freaked out by green, period. Right. But if they're not, you know, you can, you can hardly even detect it, really. Right. It's not right. like they have to pick it up and chew it. You know, yes. it's just in the eggs. So yeah. 
I think you can get creative and I feel like you can get as creative as you feel like you need to get. Um, and I won't, you know, I won't judge. I won't be the one with the, what were the, the dueling books that came out? Like yeah, one was Seinfeld's wife. Delicious. Yeah. Deceptively <laughs> yeah. delicious. And the sneaky chef. It's so yeah. funny. I had one of those. I got it as a gift and I gave it away. I don't think I ever opened it. And then I asked Brian, I was like, do we still have that book? He's like, no, That's you so got funny. rid of it. Dang. I kind of yeah. need it now, but, um, yeah, whatever works, man. Yeah. Yeah. So what else do we have to say about this topic? We've only been talking for like less than a half an hour and I feel like we've solved everyone's problems. Yeah. Or <laughs> solved everyone's problems. <laughs> Actually, saying. we didn't that's... solve anyone's problem and that's probably, you well, know. We, we, well, we'll keep going for a few minutes, but while we're paused here, we definitely yeah. would love listener input. If you have conquered or done a lot of research, this is like, I, I tend to like Google and read up on certain things that happen with my kids, but this is what I have to say. I just haven't, I haven't put time into really researching the best way to parent through it. So yeah. if you have, or if you feel strongly that what's worked for your family might work for other people, shoot us an email or, you know, post on our Facebook page. Um, all of this is at the momhour.com. You can leave a comment right here, but um, oh, I, I thought think, this would actually, this, oh, go yeah. ahead. Well, I was going to no. say, I think this would actually be a good opportunity to talk about the things that haven't worked because I think sometimes yeah. when there's those universally shared things that are supposed to work for everyone and then they don't for you, it can mm -hmm. feel really, I don't know, demeaning or demoralizing. So mm -hmm. one thing that never, two things that never worked, three things that didn't work for me ever. Um, we're having my kids like help me grow their own vegetables, oh. like, grow our own. <laughs> yes. They would pull out that carrot and they would be super proud of themselves and they would take a bite. They would take a bite. That did not mean they were going to go in that night right. and eat that carrot served up to them. It right. just never, for me, never worked that way. Same thing with having them grocery shop with me mm. or having mm -hmm. them help me make the meal. They might be really proud of the meal, but that doesn't yeah. mean that they're necessarily any more interested in eating right. the vegetable part or whatever the part right. is that they're not interested in. Um, I've just always tried to offer enough different options that um, there's something on the plate for them. Right. Right. Well, and that's, um, th that last point is something that comes up a lot. If you do kind of read up on this is that we're not making a separate meal, you know, yeah. but that always serving something, you know, they'll like, and I think that is really good advice and not stressing out if that's all they eat, if there's, you know, bread and milk and yep. sliced apples on the table and that's what they have for dinner every night. Gosh, that's hard not to stress out about for me, but that's what we're supposed to do is not stress out. Yeah. About well, I know. And, and it is hard. I think for us, like having so many kids kind of took a little of the pressure off because I really yeah. just couldn't pay that close. And yeah. my kids would also be sharing food at the table. Like mm -hmm. they'd be trading. Mm -hmm. Dinner was very chaotic around here for a while. When you talk about chaos, it's just yeah. kind of funny because I remember that. It's not quite as bad anymore. But for a while, like kids would, I'd get up to get someone a glass of milk and I'd come back and one kid would have like all the meat and the other kid would have all the vegetables because one kid liked meat and one kid liked yeah. vegetables. And I would be like, oh, I, like I lost track completely of who right. was eating what for a long period of time. So just knowing what I didn't ever want is for everyone to walk away from the table and 10 minutes later, someone go, oh, I'm hungry. I didn't really eat anything. So right. I just made sure every meal, you know, I'm not somebody who makes a meal with, you know, a meat and a side dish. I have like three side dishes and bread <laughs> right. and milk because then I figure someone's, everyone's going to find something. Yep. Um, you're right that if one of those things is noodles and the other is bread, it's hard. It's hard right. not to worry about that. Right. Um, but I guess that just goes back to what you were saying earlier, like the stress or the amount of pressure we put on the process is sometimes, you know, counterproductive yeah. to what we really ultimately want to get out of it. Right. And like, yeah. And like we said before, the more they feel like, the more they feel like they're under watch or that, you know, somehow mom's approval is tied to how well they eat. I think that's kind of a slippery slope. They may do well, but they're not doing it necessarily for the right reasons. That yeah, makes sense. Exactly. Well, Megan, I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now, but this month, my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship, international travel. Well, Sarah, that is a serious commitment, <laughs> right? You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. 
Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30-day guarantee. Wear them, love them, or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code THEMOMHOUR15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one-time use only. Bionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids' diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar, they have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them, and I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution, Haya, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash MomHour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Um, How do you guys handle sweets in your house? I mean, one of the things I, I like, again, I like to think I'm kind of laid back. We don't, we don't just have dessert every night because it's dessert, but I like to think I'm pretty laid back about when, when dessert is available. You know, I don't, Mm. I don't make them finish their plate. I don't, I don't do a lot of tying, you know, eating this. Now you get dessert, but at, at some point, especially on like vacations or when, you know, holidays and stuff, it does feel like. Now, not only are my, you know, trying to get some nutrients in them, but I'm also fighting the dessert battle. And yet I don't want to do that thing where it's like three more bites of broccoli and then you can have a cookie. I do it sometimes, but I don't really feel like that's the right way to go usually. Yeah. Well, okay. So I will say that for me, and we've talked about this before, holidays, vacations, uh, special events, mm, all bets are more or less off. Yeah. More or less. I mean, I Especially will say as that kids get older. At, I think two yeah. Well, at some yeah. point you lose. Do you lose track completely? Yeah. You really can't control it because it's not just you giving them stuff, and they're old enough to go buy it. My older kids can all go to the store now. Right. They can all walk down to the gas station and buy something themselves that they want to. They can even do it on the way home from school, and I wouldn't even right. know. I mean, so the, I, you know, you do start to lose. The only one I really have con- control over now is Clara. But um, so. I, what you say about like not making them eat three more bites, bites of broccoli. I also find myself doing that kind of thing, but it's not really because it's not because I'm trying to control like what they eat or make sure, you know, I've decided that three bites of broccoli is the arbitrary number by which I will feel like they've had enough, you know, broccoli nutrients in their bodies. It's more like, I know how fast cookies burn off Mm -hmm. and I want to feel like you sat down and ate a meal. So sit down and I will, you know, I'll even kind of anticipate that we're at a party where there's tons of sweets and I'll be like, okay, I'm hardly, I'm just going to serve you whatever it is I know you like and maybe a little tiny bit of something else and I'm not going to stress about it. You just eat what you eat and I'm not going to worry about it. But I'm mindful that I want them to at least sit down and eat something, you know, that's not, and then they can return to eating the sweets. In our house, we almost never serve dessert. For Mm -hmm. us to serve dessert, it is a very special occasion. Sometimes I feel a little bit bad about that because it just doesn't occur to me to bake a lot. Um, I don't really like sweets that much anymore. I used mm. to love them and I, I've really kind of outgrown it in the last, not outgrown makes it sound juvenile, but I just, for whatever reason, my tastes Your have taste changed. Your tastes have changed. Just my like tastes have taste. changed. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I've really gone, I would much rather sit down with like a plate of cheese or something than, mm. than eat, um, unless it's like a delicious, delicious brownie, but I'll have one and I'm good. I don't need more than yeah. one. So it doesn't really often occur to me to, 
to make a special dessert. Right. Um, that would more likely be something like I would do just on a whim, like on a Sunday afternoon or something. Right. So dessert's not really an issue in our house. Um, I don't, the kids just don't like at home have access to a lot of sweets because we just right. don't really have a lot of sweets in the house. And I think if they're buying stuff on their own, they're probably just snarfing it down outside right. before they even get back. And I just never know about yeah. it. I did that. I, I think so, I bought M&Ms yeah, on the way home from school like for years. Like maybe yeah. not every day. Maybe I'm just remembering the days that I did. But Well, and and I think also like, you know, my husband really, really loves sweets still. So he's, I think I've talked about this before. John has sweets stashed all over the place, like everywhere. But I'll run into him and be like, where is this bag of Kit Kat? Like, where did this come from? And sometimes he'll, t- he'll bring him into bed late at night, but he doesn't have them out where the kids can get to the him either. You know, know. He knows that's a fool's errand, um, you know, having that kind of stuff out. So the sweets thing, it can be an issue for sure. Because if I let Clara anywhere near just like a bag of chocolate, mm-hmm. she would, that's all she'd just, obsess, yeah. she'd obsess. She wouldn't be able to think about anything else. And I was the same way at her age. So I get it. Um, I just, I guess for me, it's like, just don't make dessert like a regular thing and keep anything that's like a special treat. Just keep it out. Just don't make it like part of your pantry item. Right. Right. Because then that's all anyone wants and they yeah. don't want anything else. But no, I, I mean, that doesn't really help you if you're really, if your family's really into dessert, because that's no, a legitimate we're thing not. too. But it does seem like those, it feels like the stuff that comes, you know, well, right now there's Valentine candy, Oh yeah. you know, and it just, it does feel like the regular basis is gets smushed up right up against candy crazy yeah. events. That's all kind the of why time. I let my kids yeah. just gorge whenever there's one of those influxes, and then I just throw away that's, whatever's left yeah. the next day. Yeah, that's gorge good. for a when, day because otherwise it just you're right. It just it just keeps dragging on forever, and you've got Valentine's Day candy still floating around in three weeks, and nobody wants that. Right. <laughs> yeah. One tip I did read um, too was that. Dessert, if there is a dessert, and I think your example of like a potluck or a party is a good one. If the dessert is out, not making a big deal about the order in which things are eaten. I mean, kids mm-hmm. are sometimes so excited for the dessert that if right. it's eaten first, like what's the big deal? As long as it's understood that, you know, there's a variety of foods here and we're expected right. to, you know, partake of different categories. You're not going to have yeah. six cupcakes, but if you want to have your cupcake first... And then right. you can be hungry and eat other things. I don't know. That yeah. was one thing I read. I don't have a problem with that. I think that then you are, I think then you're committing, if you really are going to care and you really don't want them to eat six cupcakes and you really want them to eat the cupcake first and then, you know, the meatballs or whatever after, <laughs> I think then you're kind of committing to a extended period of oversight. Mm-hmm. Like, because... Yeah. They're, they're going to eat that cupcake and they're not going to be hungry right away. Right. You know what I mean? They're going to go play yeah. and then right. they're going to come wandering back in later. And then you're still going to have to be yeah. thinking to yourself, wait, what did they eat again? Right. Did right. they, did they eat any vegetables yet? You know, do I even remember what they ate? Do right. I even care? I just, sometimes I feel like it's easier for me to have a rule, even if it seems arbitrary and you know, gall darn it as a mom, it's my right to yeah. just have arbitrary rules sometimes. Um, I just make them, I just know how much effort I want to put into those special occasions. And I keep it very, (laughs) I keep the expectations of myself and the kids pretty relaxed. Yeah. But for me throwing, switching up the order, I'm sure there's times I've let them do that. It's not like I'm saying I never do. Right. To me, like if I'm in a church potluck or something, switching up the order just throws everything off for me. And I'd rather just do it the right way. Even if on the first pass, they don't eat much. Right. No, that that makes that. Yep. Totally makes sense. There's always those things that are, that are ideal or like are supposed to work and sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. And I think right. that's the other thing about kids. Yep. You know, sometimes so. it works. Sometimes, it sometimes, doesn't. sometimes parenting <laughs> works and sometimes it's just a disaster. So <laughs> sometimes you go back to the drawing board. Um, <laughs> exactly. We should throw out some resources since we maybe are not answering all of the questions. I know our oh, friend Laura sure Fuentes, who has the Mama Bowls website, has yeah. I was looking, has a great section on picky eaters. Her focus, mm-hmm. um, a lot of her focus is school lunches, but she has recipes for other meals. Um, and she has a good combination of just new ways to present stuff, or she does a lot of recipes where it's like fast food or convenience food type items that you can make at home and make just slightly oh, healthier. Great. So yeah. it might be chicken nuggets, but at least you used yeah. like real chicken meat, you know, and yeah. baked them in the oven. 
So she has a lot yeah. of stuff like that. Um, I'm always inspired when I look at her stuff, and she does have a whole section on picky eaters that I will link to. Um, and then are you – so what? It, where are you on the Ellen Satter book? She wrote the – I mean, she's kind of like the one name you hear a lot, yeah. right, about this She's stuff? kind of – I mean, I'm trying to remember. Like, she, wasn't she kind of like into low pressure? And I, I mean, it's been so long since I've really – yeah, a lot of, her main thing, but, and I haven't, again, I haven't done all this research either, except that I know her name comes up a lot. And her main, yeah. I think her main thing is a division of responsibilities where the parent cooks, provides the food and is responsible for that. It is the child's responsibility to eat it. So it is low pressure in that the parent yeah. puts healthy food on the table. The child makes the decision about what to eat. And there are still rules about, you know, when you can get up from the table and proper manners and things like that but that there is not um, a parent deciding. And it's a lot of the other things we've talked about, like having one or two yeah. things you know the child will like, but then, yeah. but then stepping back and hands off and no comment and no pressure and no you know, good job. I mean, that's or, really kind of my natural inclination right. to yeah, an extent. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not fanatical about it. And there's right. definitely been times I've been like, wow, I'm really happy that you tried that food you yeah. never had before. Yeah. I can't help myself. I am happy and yeah. whatever. I'm not going to, I don't like anything that's too dogmatic. Right. I well, tend I to kind of rebel. Probably can, and it probably is dogmatic because I think she's helped a lot of people who are just in very, either very dire feeding and eating right. situations with some complicating factors or just um, didn't have any resources or, you know, education on how to even start with this. So right. Just like a lot of things, it probably comes across as dogmatic to some, but you and I might have the benefit of arriving at the same place just in a more organic way, I guess. Well, uh, that, there's that, I and I think that voice. I think that there are some there are families who are struggling with like seriously like disordered eating that comes from right. their own bag like their own backgrounds, you right. know, like growing up being forced to clean their plates or having eating disorders or having like a lot of anxiety. Right swirling around so it's not even just a food issue then it's not like did your kid get enough you know produce this week it really right. becomes a, a family relationship and a psychological issue at that point right. so I kind of feel like that kind of approach can really help like if you take all the pressure off then and and that and you had a huge like high pressure and you know situation going on then great um that's never really been my reality just because I don't feel like food was like that big of a deal right for me right. growing up so now, as an adult, it's not that big of a deal. It's still not that big of a deal. Yeah, it's um, I would say she's yeah. definitely rooted in a more like psychological place about, right. um, you know, have eat have how to experience eating in a way that's positive and um, not all of those things. So yeah, right. I'm looking at yeah. her website right now. It's the Ellen Satter Institute, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners are familiar with her work because it's the name sure. that I always. Hear yeah, about. I, and I knew I definitely knew the name, and in fact, a, a quote of hers just popped up on my Facebook feed like yesterday. And I know her stuff's been around since Jacob, I think, was a baby or a okay. toddler. I kind of remember maybe reading one of her more popular books when he was really little. So, mm -hmm. and I have a memory of Jacob sitting outside the fridge when he was like two, crying because I wouldn't let him. He was just eating like lunch meat by, you know, there's, there's also the others, the flip side of pickiness, right? There's the kids who won't mm -hmm. eat certain things and there's kids who will only eat other things. And so he was just wanted to eat lunch meat all day. It's like all he was obsessed with it. Yeah. And I finally, so he, there was that, there was juice and lunch meat and like some chocolate in the fridge. And I had had the door like almost like just a jar. So he could just keep kind of getting into yeah. it and eat. And I was like, finally, like you can't just sit here and eat <laughs> meat all day. So I shut the fridge and he was just laying on the floor in front of the fridge oh. going meat, meat, meat. And then he finally switched to juice. <laughs> chocolate i mean he just wanted it so badly and i think i finally just caved and i thought well i guess if i'm gonna have the stuff in the house and yeah. he's allowed to have it most of the time uh, uh you know. I know now i will say he does not have he's actually a, a really ridiculously healthy eater now but yeah he does not have a lunch meat obsession anymore it's so funny <laughs> So funny. Well, I mean, yeah. I think I was trying to think if we have like other resources or online people that I've seen writing about this. And that reminds me that this is just another one of those topics that can like bring a lot of kind of comparison or even yeah. shame about like, I feel like sometimes when you say my kid is picky and people are like, oh my gosh, mine is too. He totally wouldn't eat that kale salad that I made last night. And you're right. like, no, no. Well, no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I mean, my child yeah. only eats pepperoni pizza all day or whatever right. it is you know so I feel like there's yeah. a little bit of kind of comparison and like you know easy to feel like well 
if I'm not serving these things, then I'm not doing enough. So it is just another tricky topic where it helps to know that there are some really, really picky kids out there and some really picky kids who don't have any other complicating factors. It's not a sensory issue. It's not an anxiety issue. They just, they just don't like whatever. Right. Or all of the whatevers. Yeah. No, I I agree. And I I think that in the case of a kid who, I I think the only thing that I would not even caution about that is not the word I want to use. I'm, I'm far be it for me to caution anybody about anything, but I have fallen personally down the rabbit hole trap of, of like thinking my kid would only eat X, Y, or Z, and then mm-hmm. just continuously providing that, even if it means I have to make a special trip or go out and get it. Oh, and I, I am in that right truly, now. Truly, yeah. if, you know, in the unless it's a, like a, a gar, like a staple that you have in your house all the time anyway, like bread, which, yeah. I mean, you can't be like, no bread for you. I mean, I guess you can, but I'm just saying that, that would be really hard for me to do. If it's something that you have to go out of the house and get, I, I think that you can be, you can just be very matter of fact and say, yeah. that's just not an option today. What are some other what are right. some other things you could right. eat? And they right. might throw a fit, and maybe they won't eat that dinner, right? Um, that one night, but eventually right. they'll figure out a substitute that they yep. can live with. Yeah, it might still be, you know, in the case of the pepperoni pizza, it might still be fairly bland and right. it might be cheese cheese covered in some way. Yeah, but it'll be something different eventually. So. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that we can, we can be really relaxed about it and not worry too much about it and just feed them good stuff and hope, you know, and, and not even hope, just have confidence that eventually right. they'll get it. But that doesn't mean that we have to go too far in the other direction and cater. Yes. Agreed. That's not going to yeah. work either. Totally agreed. And especially for like, in my case, for a kid like Reed who has trouble with flexibility, that's something we're working with him on. Anyway, actually, it's a good thing for him to be out of his favorite cereal and need to choose a different cereal. Right. So it's that's helping. I mean, it's not even aside from the eating, that's helping him just learn to deal with life. Um, So I completely agree. And sometimes I cater. So I'm not a good example all the time. No, I know. I do too sometimes, but I just try not to do it all the time because it's easier for that stuff to get out to spiral, (laughs) especially when you have Mm -hmm. multiple little kids who need you. So right or who well, eat all right in have ways. we or who eat in different ways that too yeah. so have we I don't know yeah I, I'm sure there's a million things we didn't even cover like foods touching and sauces and things like that but I, I kind of feel like we've <laughs> you know we've got kind of the basic gist of it down yeah maybe we'll have to do a follow up at some point if, right I mean it's right, like dealing yeah. with any other sort of behavior I mean you and I aren't nutritionists so. Um, nor are we chefs or cooks or recipe developers, right. but behaviorally, I think we talked a lot about the maintenance, you know, some of the central yeah. issues. Yeah. 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 yeah if we um, ever bef- do an issue, if we ever do an episode about, you know, about feeding picky eaters more specifically, maybe we can get into what our actual strategies are, but there is not time today. <laughs> so I know. Part, part yeah. one. Um, well, before we wrap, um, I did want to, I had a couple housekeeping things. Um, sure. we've gotten a whole bunch of requests for new topics. Yeah, lately, which That's just exciting. makes us happy. And you can always email, the, email us to hello at the mom com or leave them in a comment anywhere. We will see it. And I do keep a running list. And when you give us ideas, we love it. Sometimes we work it in very soon. Sometimes it goes on a list and we're always kind of like toggling that list and figuring out what to talk about. But every single suggestion is a good one, you know, whether we get to yep. it or, or not. Um, we've had two suggestions recently for topics that you and I covered a long time ago. For those who are new, you might not know, but you and I used to do like mini half episodes um, at the beginning of the home hour when you had the home hour yep. podcast. So they won't show up in your feed of episodes of the mom hour. They are part of old episodes of the home hour, but where you can find them. So one person asked about disciplining a toddler recently and another asked about sleep. And it's not that we'll never cover those again because I think they're great topics and they will probably come up again, but we've talked about them before. And if you go to the momhour.com, our website, and look in the sidebar, we have links to all of those old episodes that, again, it won't show up in your podcast app because they weren't technically part of this show, um, but they're listed there by topic. And there is one about sleep and there is one about discipline. Specifically, we talked about really little kids, toddlers and stuff. So, And there's some other fun topics there too. So that was before we launched this show. And there's probably eight or nine different um, topics there. So if you haven't been 
to our website. You can find that in the sidebar and keep sending us your show ideas and your topics. Yeah, we love them. We love hearing from you guys no matter what it is. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll wrap this up. We'll see all you guys next week with a new episode Sounds of the Power. Thanks, okay. everybody. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or use code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash the mom hour. Hi friends, Megan here. I wanted to let you know about a new podcast I've just launched called The Teas Made. Think of it as a weekly cozy conversation with me over your favorite hot beverage on topics like wellness, creativity, family, hospitality, and more. Just look for The Teas Made with Megan Francis wherever you get your podcasts or head to theteasmade.com to find all those episodes. The Tease Made is your reminder to take a little break from the busyness of life. So come on in and get comfy. The Tease Made.